guys welcome back to t-bone southern ride i'm t-bone uh out here on the old midnight express the old tour glide going down the road at half the speed we need uh as you saw at the opening guys uh i'm not going to be too uh you know down and out above with this video but i do want to pay proper respects to uh, uh the people uh who had to go through funerals this week. Uh, I want to say rest in peace. To, uh, first and foremost, Philip Deaver. Uh, Philip was a brother from a lot of years. Uh, and a lot of people don't know this, but when me and Regina first got married, we actually, we rented a place with Philip. It was me and Philip and Carl Kitchen. We all uh, kind of roommated together there for a while. And uh, I know uh, Philip had been in the hospital. He had had some uh, health issues. So to uh, Lynn and Richard and the rest of the family, all of the, the family, my heart goes out to y'all. I love you guys. Do you need me? You get a hold of me here on uh, Facebook. And uh, I also want to send uh, my condolences out to Kimberly Patterson. Uh, of course, we lost Quasi Jamie Patterson. Uh, Quasi, me and Quasi went back all the way to the old days in Ducktown when we were living in the roost and Quasi and his family lived down on the L. Uh, you know, uh, Quasi had been in bad health for a couple of years and, uh, you know, I, I'm so, so heartbroken over that for Kim and the kids because a great group, great bunch of folks, guys. I mean, just down to earth, good folks. And, uh, you know, Quasi, I hadn't seen Quasi in the last few months. Uh, last time I seen him, of course, I saw, I talked to him at the Conoco over here in Copper Hill for a little while. And then I want to send my condolences today. Uh, they were having a ride service, wanting all the riders they could get down to Woodstock, Georgia for a uh, young lady who was killed by a drunk driver, I believe. Uh, I, I read as much as I could, I, and uh, her name was Ashley Paris, I believe. And uh, I send my condolences out to her family, and I want to apologize that I I wasn't able to come down to Woodstock today and ride in the uh, the funeral possession. Uh, I guess it was her dad or a member of her family had put out a call requesting motorcycles to come and kind of take Miss Ashley to her resting place. Uh, I know there's a ton of folks who went. Uh, it, it was posted in the groups on Facebook and shared around. And I know, uh, I think the Milkman went. Uh, Cisco probably went with Milkman. I, I'm thinking that they went. I, I know uh, that the last conversation I had with them, that was their plan. So uh, I, I wanna just send my condolences out to those three families. Uh, and let you know I'm sorry that I couldn't be there. I had a lot of things that's going on this morning Of course it being uh, Sunday morning when I'm shooting this video and it'll be a little bit while before this video comes out, but Man, I tell you guys that uh, you know When you reach middle age and I'm middle age, I'm 43 years old When you meet when you you get to that age you know, you start realizing that it's your generation that's going on to be with the Lord. And, you know, it really makes you question your mortality. And like I said, now I'm not trying to be macabre with this video or be a downer with this video. But, you know, guys, it's just let people know how you feel about them. Let them know you love them. I mean, even if it, you know, there's 24 hours in a day. And you can take five seconds to pull up a phone number and just take someone and say, hey, I love you. You know, it, it's not that big of a thing. You know, family, the family dynamics has drifted apart from what it used to be, certainly when I was a kid, because my grandma Higdon and all of my mom's sisters, my aunts, you know, they always made sure that the family came together for holidays and not just funerals, but for holidays and special occasions and you know now you know that that's kind of all drifted apart they have all went on home except for my aunt Gladys but 
You know, it's sad, because uh, I remember me and my cousins when we were kids, we all used to just be close, not cousins. We were really all just more like brothers and sisters. That's how close we was. And, you know, it, it's sad that the family dynamic kind of suffers over the years. And, of course, it's our fault because we're all so busy. We've always got stuff going on. And, you know, you try to sit down. My cousin Vicky. She's tried to put together her and Shelly, my cousin Chris, wife Shelly, and they've tried to put together, you know, family reunions for all of us over the last few years. And, you know, while, while we get the core group of family together, it's hard, it, it's hard for everybody to come together and be there on the same day. And that's, you know, and that's just the way life goes, guys. It's, you know, you move from the instant into the infinite. You just never know when you're going to have time to do anything. And, uh, you know, but think about that, though, guys. You know, if you're in my age group, you know, we're Generation X. And, man, when I look back, 20 years, 25 years have flown by. You know, it only seems like yesterday that I was a 17, 18-year-old kid, 19-year-old kid ready to conquer the world, and, man, I didn't know nothing. If I knew then what I knew now, but, you know, we can't go backwards, but, you know, that's just kind of a, kind of a thing I wanted to touch on in this video, you know, about the family dynamic. We just don't ever seem to be able to find time for each other, and that's, that, that's sad. It, it breaks my heart, and, I, and I'm not accusing anybody because certainly I'm as bad as anybody else. I don't, and, and, a, and a lot of times when I say we ain't got the time, Sometimes we could sit down and make the time if we would just do it. But, you know, that's, it, it's sad. It's sad. It, re it really is. But, uh, you know, that's kind of kind of where I wanted to go with this video. Just, you know, we never know what tomorrow's going to bring, guys. You know, and I'm used to death my whole life. I mean, my grandmother passed away. When I was real young, my grandma Higdon passed away, and then my mom got killed, and then my grandpa Dunn died, and man, I just, you know, when I've told y'all this in past videos, y'all seen some of my past videos, and you just keep getting hit back to back. As soon as you recover from one hit, man, you get hit by another slap. But we gotta learn how to make time for each other, guys. That's you know that's just kind of the kind of the core thing. Whether it's family, and I'm not talking about blood family. I mean, I got friends that I don't hardly see, mainly because uh, you know everybody's busy. But I just wanted to touch base on that subject there for just a minute, guys. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Had to. Uh, had a little delay in game, a little bit of a rainstorm came through, so I pulled off and waited for that to pass. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's uh, that's kind of what I wanted to do with this video today, was just, you know, kind of talk about the fact that uh, nobody seems to ever get around to, you know, being around people anymore. We, we're all so busy uh, living life and doing whatever it is we do in our daily life. But, uh, I'll tell you something, guys, that, uh, you know, these videos get to be a little bit harder when you do stuff like this and you're talking about the subject matter that I'm discussing in this video. And, uh, you know, that's just something we all deal with. We all have to deal with it, you know, loss of life. Uh, you know, it's kind of the only guarantee we ever have is that it's a guarantee we're not getting out of this thing alive you know that's yeah I, I don't mean to go all christian but if you believe in the bible the bible tells us that it was once appointed done to all men to die and then to judgment so you know it's just something we have to face and you know when it comes to uh you know family or friends who've been in bad health you know you hate to lose them but kind of the unsaid thing is you know it's better for them to kind of go on and not be suffering, especially if they're, you know, fighting a uh, battle in something like cancer or something like that, you know. But, uh, it, uh, it hurts. It, 
you know, it hurts to lose family. It really does. But uh, I'm going to jump subjects here for a minute and tell you what, guys. Over at Appalachian Mountain Rides back there, going out of McKaysville, my brother, Milkman there, he, uh, he works on bikes, sells, trades. He's actually got a couple of sharp bikes there for sale. I know uh, I, I was in a conversation. I can't remember who all it was with a few days ago. And they were talking about buying a bike. Now, I checked the built man out. He, uh, you know, he's not just a Harley guy. He got all kind of different bikes. Uh, although it looked like uh, the last time I was there, his inventory was getting a little bit low. I know uh, he just picked up a 2012 Sportster that'll be ready for sale here pretty soon. And uh, I know he's got a wide glide that uh, he's going to sell. But uh, he, he's been on the road selling here lately, moving a lot of bikes through. And that's, you know, we're getting to spring now, and everybody, uh, everybody's wanting to get out, especially now since the last year. We pretty well much have had to just sit indoors, or if you got outdoors, you kind of just were limited on where you could go. Of course, in the mountains, we weren't as limited as the folks who live in the city, like in Atlanta and up New York. We were really limited on what they could do, but thankfully we weren't limited. We're not that limited. Uh, we got mountains we can go ride through. If you ride a motorcycle, plenty of places to go that kind of keeps you out of the mainstream of everything. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, motorcycle season is definitely here. I mean, as for me, I ride year-round. You know, December, January, February, if the temperature's, you know, up, uh, yeah, 50, 55 degrees, I've got, I got gear I can put on and stay warm. I can ride uh, anything below about 48 degrees. <laughs> Uh, your boy ain't getting on a motorcycle. I'm sorry. Uh, I may be, that may make me look weak, but if it's 47 degrees outside, I'm not riding a motorcycle. I don't care if the sun's shining. It's 47 degrees. If I walk outside and I can see my breath, I'm not riding a motorcycle. And uh, that's kind of what makes me envious too. Uh, some places, you know, like San Diego, California, you know, pretty well much it's in the 70s and stuff year round you know they have a rain season but for the most part they're riding their motorcycles down in florida you know tampa and below they're pretty well much outside of the rainstorm you know they get a 60 degree day they're cold uh and then up here we get a 66 degree day we jump out into short sleeves and we're ready to go but uh i, I love seeing people getting on motorcycles so I, you know i've always said that if there was more bikers in the world the world might be a better place because you get on a motorcycle and you know anybody out there watching this who rides knows what I'm about to say when I get on a motorcycle you know you your problems just kind of all disappear you know uh, hard times hard hard day at work or you know, bills are piling up and you're having a hard time just in everyday life. And you get on your motorcycle and you just hit a nice, comfortable road to ride on. And you just kind of let it all just kind of wash away and float away. And that's kind of where I'm at with my rides. That's, you know, we I was talking about it in another video about how I had gotten to the point. I think it was a Galloway Road video. How I had gotten to the point to where... I, I don't like to ride in big groups no more, you know. I, I kind of relish these days when I just get out and I'm by myself. I can hit a back road, I can ride at my speed. And, uh, you know, that's kind of kind of the thing that uh, I kind of take away from all of it is you gotta have a way to decompress. And a lot of times when people will just finally crack and lose their minds, the problem is that they, they've never found a way to decompress. Uh, or they turn that energy into something negative, like, you know, people drink, you know, they, they use the alcohol to 
kind of just drown all their sorrows in which I'm not a drinker I don't I'm not a drinker I don't drink socially or by myself I'm just not a drinker but <clears throat> you know a lot of people say well how can you how can you not drink well you know how can you drink I mean I just I don't drink I don't need that stuff I've got my motorcycle and uh, you know you ride on your motorcycle I know people who will drink all day and then they'll go ride their motorcycle uh, that's kind of why I don't do a whole lot of these uh, these rides when they're raising money at these bars around here you know I support their cause and you know I think they're doing a good thing but you got these guys who are 9 10 o'clock in the morning they're already drinking and then they're going to jump on the motorcycle and go for a benefit ride well, they're running 80, 90 mile an hour down the road, and you're back in the pack knowing that the guys, you know, the first few guys leading you is already pretty well much hammered. Yeah, I don't do that. That's that's why I don't I don't get into a lot of that stuff right there. Uh, I've just never been big on it. Uh, of course, I'm not sitting here saying I'm a perfect angel. I did. I, I've had my moments. I did drink years ago. But uh, I grew up and grew out of it and realized that I had, I was living my better life after I got away from it because I, I wasn't never a big beer drinker. I was always a liquor drinker and I drank my share of liquor when I was younger. And, uh, you know, never really, it, it never was a, an issue to where it controlled me. I just decided one day that I didn't need it and I quit drinking and, you know, it's just, I don't do it I, I, there's no other way to put it I just, and you know my heart goes out because my dad struggled with alcoholism my whole life and you see people who struggle with alcoholism and I, it breaks my heart because man I tell you alcoholism <coughs> you know when we who don't do it let me just stop I'll back up for those of us who don't drink, we say, well, why don't they just quit? Nah, it's like being, you know, alcohol's a drug. And when you're addicted to it, it's hard to just walk away and lay it down, you know, especially when you're dependent on it. And that's, I think that's kind of the one thing we miss in it is that these folks are, they're so dependent on the alcohol and whatever their choice drug is. I know people who don't drink, but they do do drugs. And you know, it kind of just, I don't know, it breaks your heart because you can tell that they don't feel like there's another way out and they want to quit, but by the time that they realize what it's doing to them, it already has such a hold on them that they can't quit. And that, that's sad. That, now, like I say, my heart goes out to them. It, it, it really does. It breaks my heart to see folks have to struggle like that. Because, like I said, I remember seeing my dad go through that. And, you know, he uh, he wasn't a good drunk. He uh, he was a mean man when he drank. And uh, he isolated himself a lot. But uh, that's another tip. Man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm just in heavy subjects today, and Golly, but. Uh, but anyway, I, I just rode through Pleasant Hill. Uh, like I say, I'm on the old Midnight Express out here, just kind of easing around, not really getting in no super big hurry, just enjoying the day, burning a few miles off. Uh, me and R1 rode yesterday, and that video will be coming out before this one pretty soon. <coughs> but, excuse me. You know, I, uh, any day on two wheels is better than... Uh, any day in the uh, cage that's kind of the way I look at it but I tell you what I believe this is actually about a good point guys to wrap this video up for today I just wanted to kind of come in and send out my condolences for the ones who were lost and you know just let them know I'm here you know I sometimes it's you know what and people say that because they've said it to me at funeral you lose a loved one you know if you need anything let me know Sometimes all you just need is someone to sit down beside you and just sit with you and just be there. Sometimes that's better than anything. Uh, i tell you what, guys. Drop down, like, comment. Let me know what you think about this video. 
if you're watching it on Facebook, hit the like button. Uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, guys, and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be uh, you'll be notified whenever I have a new video releasing. And, uh, man, I tell you, it's been a great weekend. Back to work tomorrow, but, guys, until the next time, I'm T-Bone, and this has been The Southern Ride.